Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Greater Experience Broadcast. I am Chief Apostle Andre L. Harris, Senior Pastor, Presiding Prelate of Greater Refuge Temple, located at 2407 uh, Silverside Road in the city of Wilmington, Delaware. You have tuned in live to our Facebook Live and our YouTube channel. Uh, we are excited to have you as a part of today's broadcast. Uh, we are excited at what God is about to do in this season. Um, so we, we're going to go ahead and get started with today's program. Um, we will not be in person today at our church. Um, as you can hear in my voice, um, everything is uh, very... A little hazy right now for me, um, but we are going to try to make sure that the word that God has given us uh, goes across um, to the airwaves in spite of. So we are excited at what God is doing and how God is doing it. Um, and we, we just are excited to have you as a part of our broadcast on this week. A um, couple of announcements we wanted to get out the way uh, so that you guys are aware of some upcoming events. Um, the first uh, event that we have coming up will be our men's conference. Our men's conference is coming um, to the church on this Friday and Saturday. Um, it is a fellowship event for Breakthrough, breakthrough Reformation of Churches. Uh, the theme this year is Understanding the Assignment. And our guest preachers are as follows. On Friday, January the 14th at 7 p.m., we will have Pastor Michael Fleming out of Baltimore, Maryland. On Saturday, uh, January the 15th, we will have Pastor Hassan Douglas from right here in Wilmington, Delaware, both along with their congregations and their friends. Um, we are asking you to come out and join us 7 p.m. each night for this men's conference. We are excited at what God is doing and how God is doing it. And we want you to be a part of our men's conference um, service. Once again, it starts at 7 o'clock, and it will be at 2407 Silverside Road. That is in the city of Wilmington, state of Delaware, um, right off of Silverside Road and Falk Road. Uh, you cannot miss the church. If you come off of Silverside and Falk, make that right-hand turn onto Silverside, and you will see uh, the church on your left-hand side. Um, we are excited. We are about the fifth building from the corner. So we are definitely excited to have you as a part of that. Uh, Breakthrough Reformation of Churches also has our holy uh, vision gathering coming March 17th through the 20th at the Double Tree by Hilton hotel that will be uh in wilmington delaware um right on 4727 uh conquer pike that's 4727 conquer pike tickets are available um on eventbrite so you will get your ticket at brc Vision Gathering, that's V, V, R, C, Vision Gathering, uh, and that is on Concord, um, B, R, C, Vision Gathering dot Eventbrite dot com, B, R, C, Vision Gathering dot Eventbrite dot com, um, that's how you will get your tickets. Uh, for this awesome event, um, the Vision Gathering is our Holy Convocation. Once again, this year, it would be March 17th 
through March the 20th, 2022 um, here in the city of Wilmington. You do not want to miss this event. Um, that I can promise you, we have some dynamic, dynamic uh, preachers um, that are lined up to come to our holy convocation. Our press releases are going out as we speak. Um, so uh, we will also have flyers going out um, as the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, all the flyers will be going out um, to, to the land. So we are excited at uh, what God is doing. Um, we are looking for vendors. If you do any type of vending, um, travel agency, uh, if you sell pocketbooks, if you sell clothes, if you sell shoes, if you sell hats, if you sell any type of jewelry, makeup, uh, church hats, um, tambourines, whistles, whatever you sell, um, as long as it's not food, we are able to receive you. All of the vendor information is also online at the brcvisiongathering.eventbrite.com, or you can contact me directly at 302-803-6287 um, regarding a vendor opportunity. On Thursday, the 17th, um, we will have Bishop Millicent Hunter in the building. We are excited to receive her this year for our 10th anniversary celebration. Our Friday night preacher at the present time is still being confirmed. Um, and so we, we cannot announce at that time uh, who that is. On Saturday, we will have our workshops directly after we serve breakfast. Um, we will have four workshops. Um, more information for that will be coming in the given days. On Saturday night at five, Saturday after evening at 5 p.m., we will have our first ever uh, pre late ball, uh, which will be a black tie gala. Um, we will be honoring five individuals for this gala. Um, they will be receiving awards. We have a red carpet kickoff at 4.30, and we will start promptly at 5 p.m. Tickets for the event are $75 for the black tie. Um, registration for the convocation as a whole depends on which package you choose. You have three choices of meals with the black tie, and we will start with the dinner portion at 5 p.m. exactly on time at 5 p.m. We will be honoring Cassandra Marshall with our Lighthouse Award, Councilwoman Xanthia Oliver with our Village Award, Tyrell Ferguson with our Joshua Award, Chief Apostle Patricia C. Williams with our Icon Award, and Reverend Beverly G. Bell with our Spirit Award. Our special guests for the concert will be none other than recording artist, the Alabama Girls, and we have more performers still to be announced. We are excited at this event to welcome everybody to the city of Wilmington um, or to Delaware for our 10th annual vision gathering. This thing is going to be off the chain. Um, and so we really uh, want you guys to be a part of our vision gathering um, coming in March. Once again, the date is March the 17th through the 20th. And that's going to be at the Double Tree by Hilton 4727 Conquer Pike in Wilmington, Delaware. We want to see you in the place each and every night. Millicent Hunter will be coming on Thursday night. We are still confirming choirs. We are still confirming musical acts. But we want you guys to be a part of this celebration. Um, the Kingdom Bill Project <coughs> excuse me, is still going on. Uh, 100 Kingdom Builders, so $100 to help us with our building fund. Um, and for each person who sows that $100 seed, uh, you will go, uh, your name or whatever you choose to put on the tile will go on a tile as a, contrib as a contributor to our building fund. And your tile 
will be placed in our welcome center. Um, this is something that will be forever part of the building um, as you will be forever a part of our hearts. We are excited uh, for what God is doing with this Kingdom Build project and how God is moving. Greater Refuge Temple will celebrate our first church anniversary, February 9th through the 13th. Services will be held 7 p.m. nightly and 11 a.m. and uh, 3 p.m. on the 13th. Guest preachers will include Pastor Allegra Moses, Overseer Karan Walker Seals, Pastor Beverly Bell, Elder Kevin Seals, and uh, none other than Chief Apostle Patricia C. Williams. We are excited to receive them for our first and our first annual church anniversary. Uh, our theme this year is we are just getting started. Um, there's so much more that we have on our calendar, uh, but we will be announcing all announcements um, next week during our in-person service. Um, so we, we are definitely excited to have each and every one of you on to our broadcast this week. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get into the word. Our word today is coming from Hebrews, the 11th chapter, um, just the first verse. Our theme we're declaring this year for Greater Refuge Temple is the year of, uh, year of fruition the year of fruition, which means the year that it shall come to pass. Um, we are excited at what God is doing and how God is doing it. And we are ever excited that we can have you guys a part of this celebration. Now, we're going to come from the Message Bible version today of Hebrews 11. Um, and we are praying that you guys um, understand why. Um, once we get into this word, but we are excited at the word of God and what God is doing. Hebrews, uh, the 11th chapter says this in the Message Bible, first verse, the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we cannot see. I'll read that again. It says this fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It is our handle on what we can't see. I want to uh, teach from the theme on um, this month will be one wish, one wish, this thing called hope. In other instances or other uh, translations of Hebrews 11, we find the scripture that says, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. This month, as we kick off the year of fruition, we want to elaborate, if you will, on this thing called hope. Um, and this week, um, if you have to give a subtopic for this week, that would be the subtopic uh, for this week. This thing called hope, our theme for the month, for the month of January um, is one wish, this thing called hope. So here we find um, in the Bible, we find um, instruction as given or being given um, in Hebrews about a lesson about faith, uh, faith, what we don't see and what we don't see um, requires great challenge. It requires um, that we're able to 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 believe God uh, for something that He has uh, yet to physically show us, but spiritually He has already declared it to be so. Um, the hardest thing uh, with faith is that in order for your faith to activate, you have to first uh, and foremost understand that what you are believing God for 
may not even be in your possession yet. What you're believing God for uh, may not even be in your hands yet. What you're believing God for, you haven't received the key for it yet. Uh, You haven't received uh, instructions uh, completely on how uh, how to obtain it. You may not even know the location of where it is. But one thing you know is that the Lord said, it shall be so. And so your faith Uh, measure is not based upon what you know to be true, but it's based upon who you know to be true. Uh, When dealing with faith, uh, we understand that God has placed us in a position uh, where he is lining up, if you will, the plan, and he's lining up the end result of the destiny in order for us to obtain what he promised us he would give us um, in this season. Um, Here, the writer of Hebrews um, begins to elaborate on the ancestors who operated in faith. Um, We're not going to dig deep into that on today. We bless God for our brother Kobe, who wanted to jump on the broadcast this morning. We're not going to elaborate on the ancestors um, as it proclaims in the Bible, because the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. So as you read this 11th chapter of Hebrews, uh, dig deep into the ancestors of faith. But what we will elaborate on is this thing called hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Um, Hope means to have a wish, uh, if you will, for a certain item, a certain thing, a certain anointing, a certain place. Um, I hope that Uh, The Lord opens the doors to the church this year where members come in and become disciples and not just members. I hope, amen, that I will be able to get to Italy uh, this year or back to Africa. I hope that whatever the Lord has laid um, out for me uh, lines up with his perfect will. I hope that uh, sickness and disease uh, does not hinder uh, anyone's life connected to me. This year, I I hope that the Lord allows it into this thing called COVID-19 this year, Um, not because um, it's what just the predestined of what God has, uh, but because what God has promised us is greater than what we currently are walking into. And so faith is the substance of what we hope for. Um, Not because we already obtained it, but because we know that God has something bigger for the ministry. He has something bigger for our lives. He has something bigger for our family, something greater for our families, Um, something that won't be a hindrance, um, but will be a blessing to the family. If we look at how God flows and we understand what we've come out of with 2020 and 2021, um, how when the pandemic hit, we, uh, the church got so nervous that doors um, began to shut and people began to, even now, uh, not even come back to the house of God um, because they're still afraid of the outcome of what COVID-19 can bring to the house of God. Let's just be honest. Um, For what it is, we have a fear of the unknown. But when we have faith, we understand that what we operate in is not based upon our fear. Sometimes it's not even based upon the judgment of our minds. But what is based upon is the outcome of understanding that God will do exceeding and abundantly above what we could ask or think. It's the things that we know God is capable of that he has yet to operate in, but we know he's going to do it because he promised it to us. Uh, Most of us, some of us are asking God for a house where where we have faith that God will provide the keys to the door of our new house. Some of us are asking God for a business. Uh, Because we have faith to believe that God will uh, give us the the place of employment that we we can run our own business. Some of us are just asking God for healing because we know him to be a healer. But our faith allows us to understand that he has already healed the situation. And so we, we, we understand that faith is not what we can tangibly 
put our hands on, but it, it's intangible in our thought. It's intangible in our minds. It's intangible in physical possession, but we know God will do it because he promised it to us. Uh, it's the substance of things hoped for. Uh, in the Bible, it talks about having faith the size of a mustard seed. <clears throat> and, and, and next week, we're actually going to go into the mustard seed faith um, lesson. And we're going to teach about faith the size of a mustard seed. But the hope of faith means that when you understand that God can do it, not only will he do it, but he will do it in perfect timing. It's the substance of things hoped for. But then the Bible goes further and it says it's the evidence of things not seen, which means that it's the physicality of what you cannot see, but you believe God for. In order to operate in faith, you cannot be a person like Thomas who doubts everything. In order to operate on faith, you cannot be a, a people like the, the Israelites who wondered how come we still have not obtained. In order to operate on faith, you have to A, believe that God said it, and he said it to you. And then when he said it, you have to believe that he will do exactly what he promised you he'll do. Y'all got to excuse this, this upper respiratory infection. God has, has promised us in, our, in the word of God that he is a God who will deliver and he's a God who will deliver on time. And all he looks for is the people of God to understand the ways of God so that we are able to know how to flow in God. In 2022, we're believing God to bring to pass the things that he has promised us and the things that he has declared to be true. Excuse me, y'all. And so we understand that God is a God who's going to move in order because he's a God who operates in order. I just come to tell somebody on today, God has not forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about the things that he promised you. And I'm cutting it short. I promise you I'm going to elaborate on this next week, but I'm cutting it short today because I'm, I don't feel well. But God is going to do what he said he would do. He's going to bless you according to how great of a measure you can obtain. But in order for you to be blessed, God needs your faith level in 2022 to understand if he said it, he will still do it. If he said it, still believe on it. There are people who God had promised restaurants two years ago. God had promised houses two years ago. And they're just walking into their blessing because they understood that they didn't know when God will do it. But they understood that God will do it. What I will challenge you to do is this. Check your faith level. Check what you believe God for. Check what God has said unto you. And then check to see, are you walking in the expectation that he wanted you to walk in when he promised you he would do it? How can you expect God to do it if your faith has gotten weary along the way? How can you ask God to do it if you don't believe that God will do it to begin with? Some of us are not healed because we don't believe God can heal us. We have gotten weary because we battled this condition for so long. And God is saying, I have not forgotten about you, son. I have not forgotten about you, daughter. I have not forgotten about you, church. I have not forgotten about the business. I haven't forgotten about the house. I haven't forgotten about the car. I haven't forgotten about the increase of faith. I haven't forgotten about the increase of anointing. I haven't forgot about the increase of your relationship with me. I haven't forgotten about the increase of your prayer time with me. I haven't forgotten to open up your mind for more wisdom. For when you read my word, you'll know how to rightly divide the word of truth. But I'm waiting on you to walk in expectation that if I said I will do it, I will deliver. This week, your challenge is simple. Operate in the faith that you know God will do it. And when he does it, give him praise for it because he promised you he'll do it. Even before he does it, start praising him now for the outcome that you desire because he's still a God that will give you the desires of your heart. He's still a God that will give you the 
uh, uh, your, your needs. He will still supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. He's still a God that men will give unto your book from their bosom unto you because he promised us these things. Faith, the substance of things hoped for. This week, we just dealt with this thing called hope. What is hope? Hope is just a wish. One wish. This thing called hope is what we'll be dealing with the entire month. And so I want to encourage you that we will have Bible study on Thursday night uh, here live on our Facebook channel and our website, um, as well as our YouTube channel. Um, and we will be live in person, God willing, on next week. Don't forget the men's conference. It's coming on third, uh, Friday and Saturday. Uh, Pastor Michael Fleming on Friday from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, Pastor Hassan Douglas on Saturday from right here in Wilmington, Delaware. Do me a favor, if you will. I ask that you guys go to tithely uh, tithe.ly or go to the Tithely app on your phone and sow a seed um, into this ministry. The app will have the logo you see right there uh, on the app. When you know you're in the right place, you're going to look at look up Greater Refuge Temple Incorporated. And when you find the right uh, place, the, the church is sealed, will come up. And we ask that you sow into the seed. If you can't find us on Tithely, we simply ask that you go to the website, greaterrefugetempleinc.org, and select the Give button. And sow into this ministry. There are great things that are going to come out of this ministry in 2022, I promise you. We're going to have a single parents ministry that will be birthed this year. We were going to have a, um, and that's for single mothers and single fathers. We're going to encourage the single families um, on this year. We're in the process of trying to birth our, our housing project um, this year. We're in the process of obtaining our building uh, this year. Um, we're in the process of bringing forth um, a lot of great things. And we, Use your tithes for that. Um, we do not pay the pastor from your tithes. I have a job. Catch that in the spirit. Um, but we make sure that the will of God is done with your seed. So we ask you to go onto the website, greaterrefugetempleinc.org, or you can go to Tithely, uh, the app or the website, and so into this great ministry. We love you guys. We love you guys. I do apologize. Um, I don't apologize for being sick, but I do apologize that I cannot elaborate the way that I want to elaborate on this week. Um, and we bless God for you in spite of. Let's pray. Pray with me. Pray for me um, as God continues to heal my body. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you and we love you. We bless you and we magnify you, not for just being a keeper, but for being God and for being God alone. God, we thank you for this thing we call hope. And we thank you, God for the one wish, this just this wish that we have, of uh, this faith that we have, that you will do not just the things that we hope for, but the things that we cannot see. God, we bless you for how you're going to move into this house and into this ministry. We thank you for those that are connected to us, each and every one of our members. We bless you, God, for those that are connected to us, even as our friends. We bless you, God, for those that you have yet to send. And we ask, God, that you do what you said you will do and be God and be God alone. God, we call forth healing, not just on myself, God, but even on, on Sister uh, Sharon, God, and her family. God, even uh, on, on um, Brother uh, Mayfield uh, and, and his family, God, on uh, everybody, God, who's experienced sickness at this time. God, we ask that you heal, uh, touch, set free, and deliver. God, continue to move, for we know that Satan has no power, and we plead the blood of Jesus against all sickness and infirmity. God, we thank you for loving us and for keeping us. We thank you for honoring your word that you spoke over our lives. We thank you for being the God of covering and the God of truth. Now, God, as we leave this place, but never your presence, let your ministering angels dispatch over each and every one of us, God. And we ask, God, that you cover us, continue to bless us like never before, God. Heal your servant, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Heal your people, heal this land, God. Touch every corner. That's across this country, God, and we bind, God, the hands of gun violence, God, in the hands of, of violence, period, God, and carjackings, God. We bind uh, the hands, God, of murderers and robbers, God, prostitution, drug addicts, and alcoholics. God, we ask that you just continue to do what you said you would do. 
and that's to be the God of glory in our lives. For you are the King of glory, and we are the people who are ready to receive. Our heads are lifted up, and we're standing at the gate, and we're knocking. Now, God, we ask that you have your way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You guys be blessed, and we will see you next week, uh, either here through our Facebook channel or in person. Heaven smile upon you.